problems every day. And uh, when I take a shower, I put my phone on and I listen to the Psalms as I'm taking a shower. And I, I, re I read quite a bit of Psalms every day because there's a lot of joy in the Psalms. And, and you want to stay, you know, it's a pretty pathetic environment we live in. Uh, America's in trouble and there's uh, all kinds of craziness going on in our government and, and uh, just all around us. There's uh, just, just a lot of crazy things going on. So, but we can rejoice in the Lord. So this book of Philippians helps us to do that. Verse two, it says, beware of dogs. Uh-oh. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. You see, the, the, the flesh is what beats us up. We, we, we need to die daily to the old flesh. Do, 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 you, do you see a resurrection of the flesh coming up most every day with you? Do you do that? I do. And, and, and I've got to be, that's why, you know, to be a, uh, to be a carnal Christian and to, to live in the flesh, very easy to do. What you have to do is just do what comes naturally. You don't have to read the Bible uh, because the Bible tells you how to be spiritual, not fleshly. I mean, I just, it comes natural because that's what the flesh is. It's our nature. It's our old nature. Uh, so be very careful uh, uh, because I have no confidence in my flesh. There's nothing that, I got glasses. I got all kinds of glasses. I'll leave them down there with that Bible in case I come down there. <laughs> See, I got plans. Need them or not. <laughs> I do need them. That's why I got these up here. Uh, but anyway, um, no confidence in the flesh. So you're going to have to trust in the Lord and you have to live by faith. But how, how, how do you get faith? There's, uh, there, there's two ways to get faith. What's one of them? By grace. Huh? Uh, for by grace are we saved through faith. That's right there in that show. But actually, the way you get faith, you either ask for it, or faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So you can, you can ask God to increase your faith, and he'll tell you, read your Bible. <laughs> and then you read your Bible. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Uh, the reason that, you're, that your faith is... Uh, Week is because you spend more time reading the comic books and uh, and and watching television or or doing things that are are not conducive of gaining faith. And the principal way of gaining faith is to read the Bible and to study the Bible. And then as you study it and you you learn upon it and you we got these little one-liners we're we're uh, memorizing now and uh, helping people that say they can't memorize and, and that maybe they can just memorize these one one liners we put out, little short verses. No confidence in faith. Though I might Oh look at look at Paul now. He says, Though I might have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof might trust in the flesh, I more. Now he's telling his credentials now, his old life. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as touching the law of Pharisee. That was the highest order of the Jewish religion. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church. He persecuted God's church, the true church of Jesus Christ. Touching the righteousness, which of the law blameless. But what things are gained to me, those I count lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them all but dung, that I may win Christ. So all of his fleshly things, he was a, he was a very special Jew, and, and he was very learned. He was a Pharisee. He was the highest order of religion. But you know, uh, you know where religion will take you? To hell. Jesus will take you to heaven. The religion will take you to hell. And he was, uh, and he was against... The, you know, religion hates the simplicity of Christ. He had his, 
his high-minded religion and he was persecuting Christians and, and capturing them and, and, and he just had the, he had letters from the chief priest and Paul was going from Jerusalem to Damascus when he met Jesus Christ in person. You can find that in Acts chapter 9, the story of his conversion on the road to Damascus. And he met Jesus in person. He says, who art thou? He's seen the light. I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. Boy, that shook him up, woke him up. <laughs> he says, what should I do? And then he got saved. Amen. And, uh, but he had, it, he had, oh, I mean, he looked so good. He had his, he had his robes of righteousness and his religion and, and uh, met the law and worshiped on the right days and all of that. We have no holy days. There, there, you know, in Christianity, there are no holy days. I hate to burst your bubble, but Sunday ain't a holy day. It's just another day. That's what the New Testament teaches. Uh, you know why? Because we uh, we got a hard we got a hard time uh, uh, getting uh, someone to come out to church on Sunday. But uh, they didn't have no trouble in the New Testament. Those real Christians, they had church every day. We're gonna have it. But in, in Milwaukee, we had church every day. I had church every day four times, six days a week, and seven times on Sunday. That's everyday church. And God being my helper. Uh, if I if I keep going and kicking and going forward, uh, we'll we'll have it again. I think uh, I think more church is better than less. You don't have one. Like I say, we had four four times a day we had church service, six days a week, and on Sunday seven times, and uh, that's a lot of church. So the, 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 every day is God's day. Every day is a holy day. Let's have church, Amen. We had a fairly good crowd this morning. Drag a few out for Sunday night. Some of you come. We had, let's see, do uh, we had more last Sunday night than this. I thought it was going uphill, but we dropped back a couple tonight. That's okay. I'm glad you're here. I'm talking to the wrong ones. You're, you're the ones that are here. But uh, 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 we've got to uh, uh, gather together and have faith. But he was a religionist, and and we we don't have a certain time when you have to come. I guess the Catholics have to go at. Christmas and Easter. I don't know. I never was a Catholic. But there's a couple some holy days you got to go. Probably Christmas and Easter, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Once a year, people. Huh? We used to go on the once a year people. To go to church. Once a year, twice a year people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent Christ, who suffered the loss of all things. In verse 9, look at this, a big verse. Verse 9. And be, be found in him, in Jesus not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law. You see, he was a Pharisee. They kept the law. They met on a certain day. They gave a certain offering. They did this. They did that and, and all of that. And so by what they said, keeping the law, but they really didn't keep the law. They did all these ceremonial things, but the real things of, of truth and faith and, and, and heartfelt stuff, the Pharisees didn't have that. Because he didn't really know God. Because you don't get that by keeping the law or keeping ordinances. You get that by having a living faith where it's easy to, to follow God if you have a living faith. Found in him, not having my own right, but which is the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. That I may know him. Oh boy, this is a verse right here. Kind of long for you to memorize. It's got about four lines, but you ought to memorize it. <laughs> that I may know him, Jesus, and the power of his resurrection, amen, and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. That's a heavy verse right there. That's a big verse. That I may know him, Christ, and his power of his resurrection, resurrection of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of his sufferings, suffer with him, being made conformable unto his death. Verse 11, If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, were not perfect, but I follow after it that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Jesus Christ. Verse 13, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, 
forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Did you know we can't have yesterday back? Did you know many people in, in, in our life, let's just, let's just take, whoever we are, just take it. Philip's in the front. I'll just take Philip. Philip, you know, yesterday's gone. You had victories, you had defeats, okay? But you got today and forward. That's all we can experience. We can't live in the past. I can't live back in Milwaukee uh, when I had giant crowds and big church and and, and, and all of that and, and a lot more stuff going on in seven days a week church, four times every day, seven times on Sunday. That was great. That's behind. And, uh, and so there's, there's, there's victories from behind and there's failures we've had behind. I've had it. Victor's had it. Since we've been saved, we have victories and failures. But all we have is today and forward. I can't live in having seven days of church four times, six days a week, and seven times the other day. I can't live in that pass. I can't live in uh, I can't live in the victor uh, in the victories of the past, and I will not live in the defeats of the past. I'll have victory today, and I go forward. Amen. Amen. How about it? Don't you think that's the best? We made mistakes. You gonna sit around and mope about your mistakes? That's a fool. Just, just claim 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And, and, and we're right back up at his side having fellowship with God. Yeah, we stumble, but, but it says a righteous man to raise up seven times, amen, or 70 times seven. If we if we're belong to him, we're his child, and he'd give us victory today. We can't be talking about the past, the, 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 the victories, or the failures. But do his will today. We're still living and breathing. I dear, my dear friend, I just got the call just before church. I just got the call. Brother Lamb died and went to heaven. Oh. Yeah, he went to heaven. And, and, uh, how, how many of you knew Brother Lamb? Yeah, just, just one. He helped me here. He, was, he, yeah, was, he, he worked with me. And uh, he moved to Macon, uh, uh, Macon, Georgia. He died there. He's 96 years old. Had a long life. Wow. But uh, he was winning souls. He won a lot of souls for Idaho over there at that counseling desk there. And he loved, he missed us. I talked to him about two weeks ago. And he always talks about the old times. I wish I was still with you, Brother Varga. I wish I could come back. He wasn't giving up. I was doing the best you can there. And he had a Bible study. He's writing another book. He's just, just, just writing. And, uh, and I, I got the call just before church. Your brother Lamb died, and so, uh, uh, but thank God he was he was faithful to the end, you know, and and he just he just wanted to keep going, and and that's the way he was. When I first seen him, he was in his high eighties, and he come in here and he said he's looking for some place. He says all the. He had a hard time any preachers taking him on. And he said, what that old man? What do I do with that old man? Well, here's an old man that wanted that old man. <laughs> and he did good. He was, he was at my side. And, and he was, uh, and, and he led a lot of souls to Christ here. And, and I loved, uh, loved Brother Lamb a lot. Well, he's with, he's with his, he's up in heaven looking down at us. Now, Brother Lamb, uh, he don't have to call me from Georgia I called him about three days ago and they got no answer because he'd probably been real sick. He died on Friday. And so that's about three days ago. Actually, you might have called him on the day he died. And, but I got no answer on his phone. Uh, but uh, he won't have to ask me how things are going. He sees it. I, I believe people have been saved. They look down here and they can see what's going on there. He probably, probably looking down with my mother. He never met my mother, but he's up in heaven with her now looking down from heaven and, and with Peter, Paul, and James and and, and, and all of that and uh, oh my heaven's going to be so good oh I'm looking forward to heaven and brother lamb you're there now with our Lord praise God hallelujah I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded and if anything be otherwise minded God shall reveal it uh, let us uh, as many of us be perfect how many perfect ones we got in here? Nobody. I'm the only one? I'm not. I am, but I'm not. Well, now, let me tell you, so that's a trick question. It's a trick question. 
Because if you're saved, in the eyes of God, you're perfect. He doesn't see your sin at all. He doesn't see your past sin, your present sin. Or your, he doesn't see any. Because when Christ, when you receive Jesus as your Savior, you become perfect in Christ because nothing can go to heaven that's not perfect. Imperfection can't go to heaven. So I have to be perfect because when, 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 brother, died, when brother Lamb died Friday, he went to heaven and he had to be perfect to go to heaven. Now, he was a good man and a preacher and a soul winner and a good Christian, but he had sin in his life even after he was saved, like you and I do, amen? amen. Yeah. But we're perfect in a sense that no sins are held against us. And Jesus said, your sins and your iniquities will I remember no more. He don't even remember our sins. You know, our problem sometimes, the devil, the devil's the accuser of the brethren. You know what that means? He bothers us. He'll say, Victor, he's supposed to be saved. You went out on your birthday and got hammered. I did. <laughs> My friends just like to hear that stuff. Huh? That's what I heard. I read it on the Facebook. You see how the devil will get at you? But you're still perfect if you say, are you saved, Victor? Well, you're perfect, even if you got hammered on your birthday, which you didn't. I didn't. Because you're not hammered, right? Well, I thought about it. I was like, no, nah, I don't need it. Today's your birthday? Yeah. Yeah. And you didn't get hammered. No. No. But you're perfect, even if you would have got hammered. Well, the other guy got hammered, the other guy that was here. I don't know. He wanted, he wanted to go get hammered with you. He's about half hammered when he come in this morning, him and his buddy. <laughs> Your guy hit <laughs> there, There's a... <laughs> James, you're an enabler. <laughs> it's his buddies, his roommates. <laughs> yeah. That's his... I, I I know you're fooling around on that, so I was fooling around on you. But you know, fooling around I fool, fool around too much sometimes. But we're perfect in Christ. I've got to be perfect to go to heaven. Brother Lamb, when he died Friday, God gave him nine to six years. And but when he in order for him to get into heaven to lay he took his last breath <coughs> and died, he was immediately in heaven, perfect. He got into heaven because he was perfect in Christ, in the blood of heaven, uh, in the blood of Christ. But did you know what he's going to be now and forever? Perfect, a real perfect. He'll never sin again. He'll be like Jesus. He's been in and out of the hospital so much. Every time I talk to him, bless his heart, he went in for this and that, and I figured the Lord going to let him finish that book, but God took him to heaven now just a couple days ago. He was perfect from the day he was saved in Christ so he could go to heaven, and, and now once he's in heaven, he'll be perfect for eternity, for the real deal. So don't let see, see the accused you tell you, Philip, you ain't no good. You lost your salvation. Sandy, you you know, you ain't, blah, blah, blah. It, 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 it cause you trouble. And, uh, <laughs> don't listen to the devil. How many of you are saved? You say, I know I'm saved. You know you say, okay, all right. All right, okay. Look, everybody got their hand up. We've got a saved crowd here tonight. I don't know how many out there at Facebook. If you are, if you ain't saved, Facebook, get saved tonight. We all, everybody raise your hand in church tonight. So look at it. Because you're saved, the blood of Christ has washed you, and you are perfect. You gotta be perfect to go to heaven. And and you can secure your perfection on earth. And uh Jesus said this, I'll never forget my son in law, Patrick Vandenberg. He uh, he was my assistant at uh in Milwaukee, he runs a place now. When I left there in 92, he took over. Been there ever since, running a mission in Milwaukee. That was a big mission, and I tell you, we had church every day. He still have church every day. But uh, 
I'll never forget when he was a young preacher, just got out of college, he, he, he preached a message. I always remember that message. And uh, it was a good message that Patrick preached. And it was, uh, 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 Jesus said, be perfect as I am perfect. Whoa. Jesus said that. Be perfect. I'll preach that message one of these. I've preached it before. I'll preach it again. It's in the, it's in the uh, Gospels. Jesus said it because that's where we'll hear about what he says in the Gospels. It has some old quotes in a couple other books, but best it's in, in the God. Be perfect because I'm perfect. And, 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 and we have the ability to be perfect while we're on this earth. God help me and forgive me that I don't have that perfect life that I could have, but I don't have, but I should have. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but is common to man. But God is faithful and will not suffer you to be tempted above which ye are able, but will with the temptation make a way of escape that ye may bear it. Now, according to that verse of Scripture, which is a promise of the Bible, that I only sin because I want to sin, and God always gives a way of escape, but we don't always take the way of escape. Is that what that, Bible, is that, what that verse says? There are no temptation taken you or given you, common to man, but God is faithful and will not suffer you to be tempted above which ye are able, but will with the temptation make a way of escape that ye may bear it. Yes, Philip? necessarily uh, choice like you want to do it or that you're ignorant of the option to escape at the time. No, we want to do it. We, we sin because we want to. Uh, sometimes we uh, uh, there's a sin of ignorance uh, but 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 That's basically, yeah, 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 well the, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. I think uh, sometime uh, uh, we sin because we're not uh, we, we don't have, we, we're not knowledgeable but immediately when we when we make that kind of when, when we know of that sin we'll stop it we'll stop that's a good question if you're walking in the spirit, you'll yeah if you're walking in the spirit you won't and 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 he'll, he'll he'll show you in the bible and he'll keep you from it but there are no temptation given you because when you get to the uh once you're saved you're not under the law you see the law is a school teacher first and it, it tells us what to do and what not to do that's what the law is. It's it's the schoolmaster tells us in Galatians to bring us to Christ. That's that's what the law is. But but once we're saved, we're not under the law anymore. We don't need the law because once I'm saved, I'm under grace, and uh, I'm just going to do right. If I choose to do right, and and that's what the First Corinthians ten thirteen comes in. You know, is that door open over there? I think so. Someone's walking over here looking. Check that, Jeffrey. See if that's open. Make sure. Oh, yeah, he's there. Here he comes. So, uh, uh, let us therefore as many as be perfect. So what he says that, he's talking to every saved person. Every saved person is perfect in Christ by the shed blood of Christ. He doesn't remember our sins anymore, your sins and your iniquities. Will I remember no more? And, oh, that's a wonderful thing. Uh, so we are perfect, and we will be perfect when we have our glorified body. But it says, Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if anything be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto us. Nevertheless, verse 16, Whereunto I have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. Got the same rules, the rule book, the Bible. Brethren, be followers together of me. And mark them which walk as ye have us for an example. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and I'll tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. There's some Christians and some religionists, they try to, they try to get us to walk the wrong way. When Paul says, you follow me, I'm follow, follow me as I follow Christ. I, I tell you, follow me as I follow Christ. If, if I slip, which I might sometime, don't follow my slips, but follow me as I follow Christ, you understand, because Christ is the example. He's a perfection. We as Christians might have times when we're not absolute perfection. 
Don't follow me when I'm that way. Forgive me, okay? <laughs> and follow me as I follow Christ. Do you get that? Don't expect your pastor to be perfect. I'm a pastor. And I should try to encourage you and help you, but I'm sure not perfect, just like none of us are. But the Bible told us, Jesus said, be perfect as I am. We ought to be working towards perfection. Ought to be trying more and more. Sometimes we, we fall back. We do pretty good and we fall back. So what's that called? Called a backslider. You're still a Christian, but you're not a happy Christian. Amen? You're not happy. When you're living in sin, you're not happy. You don't feel like reading your Bible. And, and, and you don't feel like going to church. And you don't feel like telling people about Jesus because you're backslidden. That happens, doesn't it? It can happen. I don't want to ever be in that kind of condition. Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame. Who mind earthly things. That's the thing. Who mind earthly things. Who mind earthly things. For our conversation is in heaven. Conversation means more than speech. It means way of life. I should be living like my citizenship is in heaven, not like I'm a citizen of this world. The old songwriter said, this world is not my home, I'm just a passing through, amen. The Bible says we're sojourners. Our citizenship is in heaven. So if we have these things uh, in our life, for our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, like Brother Lamb's vile body on Friday. He died in his old sin-sick body, perished, and he went on to the Lord. doesn't have his... I'm not going to get into that because I'm, I'm at the end of my sermon, but you don't have your glorified body right away. When Jesus comes back at the rapture, we'll have that. But like Brother Lamb, when he went to heaven, and my mother and father and my grandmother and grandfather and my Christian friends and everybody, all of them that went to heaven, that body they have now, it's an intermediate body. I, I, don't, I can't explain it a whole lot. But it's not the resurrected body, because they ain't resurrected yet. It's there's an intermediate body of them that are, that are in heaven now. But they, but they will, because, because the Bible tells us Thessalonians, it says the dead in Christ shall rise first. They're, they're dead, but they have an intermediate body. And then they will go from intermediate body to glorified body. Say, expect, I can't explain it to you. I, don't, I believe it. I just can't explain it to you. I, I mean, you know, someone might think they're smart enough to. I can't. But I, but I know it's not a resurrected body because the dead in Christ shall rise first, but they have the intermediate, whatever that is. But it's, it's, it's some kind of presence because they're recognizable because they can recognize each other in heaven and stuff. And so, I mean, that's way above me. That's way above my pay scale, way above yours, too. And uh, we, but we have that. But it says here, uh, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. That's what we're going to be like Jesus. Isn't that going to be good? We're going to have a glorified body. According to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Well, this is a great chapter. This great book of Philippians, glorying in the cross, rejoicing. But what when we said rejoice means to have joy again. And so we, we ought to rejoice and rejoice and rejoice and rejoice. Because we have a, a home in heaven. We have a wonderful Savior. He'll deliver us from all of our trouble. He'll deliver us from all of our fears. He'll meet all our needs. Isn't that wonderful? Why we get uptight about stuff and don't sleep and worry and fret? You don't have to if you're saved. If you're saved. Facebook folks, got people watching out there on Facebook. I, I hope you all saved. Now, everybody in church here, raise your hand. We had one guy come in after, just come in later. Are you saved, sir? All right, he's saved too. So all of us here are saved. Amen. So um, uh, I'll take your word for it. God, no, only... Only you and God know if you're saved. Only one I know for sure saved in here is me. <laughs> the only one you know in here that's saved for sure is you. You know if you're saved or not. No one else knows. I, I might think you're saved. You might tell me you're saved. You might act like you're saved. Sometimes you might act like you're not saved, but you can still be saved. 
Isn't that sad? That's something. How this old flesh can grab us again and bring us down to... Uh, have you ever... Have, has, a, has old demons... They're just demons that do it to you. It's demons. It's demons. And a demon just grab you sometime and you was doing real good and, and all of a sudden that demon, he just come up so strong he dragged you into something. Now you went in. You went in willingly but, but did you ever notice how sometimes demons are, are a lot harder working on you than at other times? Have you, have you experienced that in your life? I have. I have. Huh? Yeah, yeah, the demons. But that's why we, we talked about it in Sunday school this morning. Put out the whole armor of God. We can stand. And having done all, to stand. Amen. Gird about with truth. Breast pray to righteousness. Feet shod with preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, the shield of faith. The helmet of salvation. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And having done all, to stand. Amen. Amen. Because God will do it. And we fail. And it constantly in, in, in Ephesians and here and all through the Bible, it talks about the flesh and the spirit, the flesh and the spirit. We walk in the, the spirit, we'll not fulfill the lusts and desires of the flesh. So we've got to gather together like this and we've got to uh, encourage one another and we've got to meet and, and preach and love one another and care for one another and win souls uh, with one another uh, because we're, we, we have a great enemy, Satan and the flesh and the devil, the world of flesh and the devil, it's our enemy. Do you recognize that? Well, what are we going to have to do to overcome it? Get in your Bible. Memorize your Bible. Get the victory. And remember this. You can't, over sin, you can't overcome sin by resolution, by resolving not to do it. You can't. You never can do it. Charles Finney had a great dissertation. I, one of his lectures is on that. You don't overcome sin by resolution. You overcome sin by faith. The same way you got saved by faith is the way you overcome sin. Like I overcame alcohol when I, the day I was saved. Overcame by faith. I've never wanted a drink. In all these years, I've never wanted a drink. I've never took a drink. I've never sought for a drink. I've never worried about that. I've never had, oh, God, keep me from drink. Never had to do that. I, I, I declared by faith when I got saved, alcohol was gone. 50 years and six months. Amen? Praise God. Some of you haven't had that victory. I know uh, haven't, haven't done that. But, but you can't have. Why haven't you? Faith. Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Lord, increase our faith. Lord, help us now. Thank you for these that are here tonight. That about the crowd we had last week. We're looking for more. We want to have church every day. Give us church every day, Lord. Several times a day. Bring us revival. Bring us old Holy Ghost revival. Revive us again. Glory to God. Is anybody out there? Everybody here said they're saved in church. I'll take their word for it. How about Facebook? There's someone out there. You need to be saved. Pray this sinner's prayer with me. Pray the sinner's prayer. God's convicting you. Pray the prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me and shed your precious blood. On Calvary's cross, rose from the grave the third day. The best I know how, with an honest heart, I turn from my sins, receive you as my Savior. Thank you for saving me right now. I pray there's been those out on Facebook. If you got saved out on Facebook, let us know about it. Send us a message. Thank you, Lord. You're still in the soul-saving business. Thank you for this wonderful book of Philippians, chapter 3. Boy, chapter 4, that's something tomorrow. Thank you, Lord. Bless now as we depart. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.